Last time, we ended off with the androids arriving and the heroes starting their fight with them. Androids 19, 20, 21, and 22 were destroyed. But before Android 22 was destroyed, she was able to awaken Androids 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Also, Kakarot started to feel the effects of his heart virus and had to leave the battlefield, which he still hasn't returned yet. We ended with the androids defeating the heroes and taking off. So, this time, that brings us to where the heroes are recovering from their defeat at the hands of the mechanical menaces. As the Saiyans fully recover, Vegeta and his rage would fly after the androids. Future Shaoji was about to stop him, but Raditz stepped in front of him saying not to chase after the androids right now. After they start talking, Future Shaoji would go on to say these androids are stronger than the ones from his timeline. The heroes fly off and discuss how long it will take for the heart virus medicine to work for Kakarot, which Future Shaoji says it can take about 10 days. Back with Yurin, she just now found the heart virus medicine for Kakarot and gives it to him. Back with the androids, they're still flying around and looking for a vehicle. They see the van as usual, and now that there are more of them, it would be too small. So instead, they keep searching until they find something bigger, maybe like a semi-truck. For the fun of it, and as a reference to Dragon Ball Z abridged, since none of the others would know how to drive a truck like this, I'm going to say that Android 13 knows how. After all, he does wear a trucker hat, so might as well be a trucker too. Which, after they take the truck, Android 18 still says she wants to go and get new clothes, so they agree and head off. With the heroes, they decide it would be better to take Kakarot away from his home and the King's Castle so the androids can't find him as easily, even though none of them besides Kakarot would have been associated with the now defunct Turtle School, Kame House would still probably be the best place to hide him. So, all the heroes get ready to leave and take a ship to Kame House, so that the androids won't be able to sense their key from flying. In the meantime, Vegeta would still be training to try and surpass himself, since he would be furious he lost against the androids, even as the Super Saiyan, and with him being immortal. Also, something to mention is that the heroes weren't alone to the time machine like Trunks is, as no one would have told Bulma anyway. Bulma is dead, and even if she was alive and told, she wouldn't have told the Saiyans about it. So, the whole thing about going and seeing this other time machine, along with finding the eggshell and shed skin of Cell wouldn't happen. Back with the androids, number 18 steals new clothes as per usual, and when they are chased by the cops, she quickly kills the two police officers. Anyway, back with the heroes again, they probably would have the ship radio on, so they do hear about the mysterious calls from Gingertown, and that all the inhabitants just disappeared. The radio would then go on to say that there is clothing a little about, with it being like all the inhabitants just melted. Also, since one guy had a rifle, they would hear that it looked like they were trying to fight something, which, when they hear this, they would be curious about what is happening over there. So, Raz decides to leave to go check it out. At this time, they would have already landed at Kame House as well, so they would have been watching the news report about it too. When the Saiyan warrior lands in Ginger Town, they wouldn't see anything at first, but they would sense the key of Cell and tell him to show himself. When he does, he's still holding a person, which he quickly demonstrates his ability to drink slash absorb people through his tail. Cell would still tell Raditz that he's next, which him knowing his name would be a shock. When Cell starts to power up, they would still feel the energies of Frieza, Kakarot, Vegeta's, and even others from the past, like Piccolo's. Even when Vegeta is off training, he would sense the energies coming from Cell as well. At this point, future Shaoji and regular Shaoji decide to take off to check it out. Once the fight starts with Raditz blasting Cell, the other heroes would have sensed it as well. The androids would have noticed too, so number 16 tells the others that two large powers are fighting in a suburb of West City. Anyway, Raditz would be beating down Cell at first, though he would still mention he hasn't achieved his perfect form yet, which Raditz would ask if this is why he was absorbing people, and he would say he converts their essence into energy. Though, he wouldn't ask about the other time machine, since they wouldn't have known about it. Cell still uses the Kamehameha to surprise Raditz, and in the confusion he grabs the Saiyan and starts to drain his arm. Though, after knocking Cell away, his immortality would start to regenerate his arm. So, he would stall Cell by having him talk about who he is and why the energies of others can be sensed from the creature. So it explained he was created by Dr. Jiro, who collected the genetic material from all of them with spy robots. Though, Cell and his explanations would still probably tell them that he is a version that came back in time, and that this world Cell won't be done until years from now. After all of this talking, Raditz's arm would have completely regenerated, so Cell would have realized he was just stalling for time. When future Shaoji and Shaoji arrive, Cell would still get ready to retreat and use a solar flare to blind the three Saiyan warriors. 
Asel flees, Vegeta arrives at the battlefield, and Nappa arrives shortly after. Raditz explains everything to them about what Cell is. Since their massive Super Saiyan form wasn't enough for the stronger androids in this timeline, they plan to try and surpass Super Saiyan again, to see if it's even possible. Since Cell mentioned it coming from the future, future Shaoji and Shaoji would head off to Jiro's lab to destroy the, this timeline Cell. After they destroy the lab, they keep searching for Cell, but he always hides before they get the chance to find him. However, one good thing that happens in the meantime is that Kakarot does fully heal and get back up from the heart virus. Once he does, he would teleport to everyone to talk about his plan to try and surpass Super Saiyan again. Though this time, with Cell getting stronger by the day and the androids out there, they don't have the time to train, especially without the use of the hyperbolic time chamber like they had in the manga. He would gather the other Saiyans to train as well and spend the next day training. While they are training at Kame House, the androids would show up as per usual, since they're actually looking for Kakarot this time. However, they still go to the deserted island, not to spare Kame House, but to have a bigger area to fight. In these fights, Android 17 would be fighting Raditz, Android 18 would be fighting Vegeta, Android 16 would get to fulfill his dream of fighting Kakarot, Android 14 would fight Nappa, Android 13 would fight Future Shaoji, and Android 15 would fight Shaoji. Before the fights start, they would all power up, which the fights would be going in the Android's favor at first. In the fight with Raditz and Android 17, obviously in his base form he wouldn't stand much of a match against the Android, so he would just transform the Super Saiyan from the start, which would get him closer to matching the mechanical menace. His immortality would be helpful here, as the longer the fight goes on, when his injuries heal he would get stronger from the Zenkai boost as well. Though, this would probably only work up until the point his power matches Android 17. Though, when Raditz uses Double Sunday against Android 17, he still resorts to using his barriers as they should go to another island, since this one was destroyed. The other fights go basically the same as this one, so I won't go into a lot of detail with them. Also at this moment, Cell notices where they're fighting and heads off towards them. The fight continues on a new island with the Saiyans and the androids basically going blow for blow with each other. Anyway, Cell's arrival is confusing to the androids since he doesn't know who he is, but he quickly starts to fight with Android 17, nonetheless. This version of Cell was improved to be able to absorb the other androids, so he would have to absorb all six to become perfect. I know Android 16 is purely mechanical, but Bulma probably would have been able to improve Cell to be able to absorb Android 16 too. Regardless, in the fight with Cell and Android 17, he wouldn't stand much of a chance against the bug-like creature. Raditz would step back into the fight and attack Cell, but he wouldn't stand much of a chance either. Just like with Piccolo, Cell would be beating him up, then eventually snap his neck and blast him through the chest before throwing him aside into the water. As Cell starts to approach Android 17, number 16 tells him to run and that he will fight Cell. Just as Cell is about to absorb number 17, 16 steps in and knocks Cell away. Their fight goes basically the same with him trying to rip off Cell's tail so he can't absorb any of the androids. After number 16 uses the Hell Splash and Cell doesn't reappear, he would again tell the androids to run, that Cell isn't dead. From there, Cell sneaks up behind number 17 and absorbs him, thus transforming into what would look like a semi-perfect form. Though in this timeline, he's only one sixth perfect instead of one half after absorbing Android 17. After he finishes transforming, Android 16 would tell the others to flee. Over Cell's new speed, he easily is able to stop them. So a fight would start out between number 16 and Cell, but instead of him blasting 16 away, he absorbs the Android instead, which is what now makes Cell one third perfect. So something to mention here is I don't have art of this form, so I'm still going to use the semi-perfect form until he absorbs more androids. After he transforms from absorbing Android 16, he would still try and use 17's voice to trick Android 18. He still sees through this and threatens to blow herself up, however Cell believes he is fast enough to reach her before she can charge the energy to do so. Without Tien being around to stop Cell from doing this, he is able to follow through on his plan and absorb number 18. I know he isn't in his perfect form at this point, He's only halfway to perfection, but since he has number 17 and number 18 absorbed, I'm going to switch to use the art of his current form. Regardless, this leaves only androids 13, 14, and 15 left to try and take on Cell. The Saiyans would have been watching all of this go down, but they would be interested in seeing what Cell's perfect form will look like, so they let him absorb the androids. When the last three try to flee, they get to the island number 18 and number 16 made it to in the manga, but the heroes and Cell would catch up to them. The same should theoretically be able to restrain them, since they got to the point of matching Android 17 and 18 in power, while these androids were weaker than the twins. So, to help restrain these androids for Cell, which leads to him absorbing number 15 first, then number 14, 
and finally number 13, thus obtaining his perfect form. Vegeta would still step up to face him first, with him going to his full power from the start. Though, unlike the manga in the fight between Vegeta and Sunny Perfect Cell, he wouldn't be winning the fight against Perfect Cell. After getting beat down for a while, Vegeta still resorts to using the new technique he developed, the Final Flash. When it hits Cell, as Vegeta is a mastered Super Saiyan, it would do more damage than what it did in the manga, since at that point Vegeta was only an Ascended Super Saiyan. However, it still wouldn't be enough to kill Cell, so he would regenerate from this attack. After this, Vegeta would be getting demolished by Cell, even when he isn't using his full power. When he is eventually knocked unconscious, Nappa would try fighting with Cell as well, since he would have been angered by what Cell did to the Saiyan Prince. With Nappa's anger boosting his power, he would be faring a little better than Vegeta did, but it wouldn't have been enough to matter. Regardless, after this Cell would be kind of disappointed in this, so he would still ask if they could get stronger if they had more time. After saying yes, he would still propose the Cell games to take place in 10 days. He lets them know he'll give a TV broadcast to give the rest of the details, and then he takes off. Though, before he makes the report, he still goes and makes the arena for the Cell games. After he makes the broadcast for the details of the Cell games, which are the same as in the manga, he still blasts a hole in the wall and leaves. Though, he still does say he would kill everyone on Earth if he isn't defeated. So, the heroes get ready to start their training in the next 10 days. It will most likely be very intense training, with them fighting until they basically can't move. So that once their immortality restores their bodies, they get a Zenkai boost. Then from there, the process repeats up until the day of the Cell games. They wouldn't get the strongest training in the hyperbolic time chamber, since it didn't last a year, but it would still be a sizable boost in power. Also during this, the heroes still work on trying to surpass the mastered version of Super Saiyan again, but they aren't able to yet. Mm -hmm.